platform for ultrasound imaging uh, that was based on this small $100 laptop called the OLPC, uh, possibly from the, from the MIT. Uh, and that was a, a very great experience because we, we managed to get a prototype running in less than six months for a device that would be costing less than $8,000. Uh, the issue is that uh, it would not have fit within the, um, the strategy of the company, which was more on to higher end devices. Uh, nonetheless, that was extremely interesting to see that, uh, you know, you could do a very low cost device, uh, provided you, you have a bit of uh, knowledge in the, in the technology and hardware. Uh, a couple of years later, I spoke, I spoke with um, Bastien Guéry from the Wikimedia Foundation, connected me with uh, some people, and we founded an association uh, that was a Copen at the time, uh, still running on. It's about uh, providing a medical device, uh, open source, low cost, uh, for general use. Uh, personally, I chose to, to take my uh, own project and not to pursue with, with a Copen. I really wanted to focus not on medical imaging because that was really already uh, down the path. I wanted to do, be a bit more upstream, meaning that uh, what I was looking for was to contribute to uh, the open source uh, body of knowledge for really upstream uh, technology. And that would be, you know, we we all know what the Arduino is. It would be more of developing the Arduino of ultrasound. Uh, so that's what I did. Uh, starting, yeah, on Academy we started started that in uh, 2016. Uh, this is really not my main activity. I'm really an hobbyist. I don't know anything about hardware. Uh, I know a bit about uh, ultrasound, but I like to hack around and to, to play around with stuff. So that's why it's been uh, quite a while. It's, you know, you, you, a project on which you, you work a few hours at a time, uh, but still you, you push doing it. And at one point, you, you manage to get something out. Um, so the, the idea is really yeah, to, to provide an open source uh, tool. Uh, the advantage of being on the long run is that you, you tend to connect with a lot of people. And even though uh, it's a very niche community, uh, Morgan, you mentioned uh, the community uh, I'm working with, we're 150 plus uh, curious users, uh, people having uh, developed devices based on this piece of, uh, of, of hardware. Uh, and today uh, we have some serious forks also that has that have uh, stemmed from this project. It's been used in several um, universities. It's a piece of hardware that is designed for makers, for researchers, for people you know wanting to have access to ultrasound imaging technologies. Uh, and we we have yeah we have 150. Uh, not going much into the details of open source and advantages of open source, but it's really uh, a fascinating community. And I believe that, you know, uh, we're really at the first stages of open source hardware for all type of usages. Uh, ultrasound is the easy technology compared to others. And that's why there was that was the, the first easy step. But uh, I'm also discussing with other open source imaging initiatives like uh, uh, Open uh, RMI uh, through Lucas Winter, who is working so on developing open source RMI. And you know, from this discussion, it appears that it's really feasible to have some open source hardware that uh, you can develop a tool that will cost time times less than what's on the market, and that you could uh, help you to prototype whatever you want to do with this uh, imaging modality. Uh, yeah, so that's really the, the big background. Uh, today, uh, so okay, I don't have the, the presentation, but today to give you an idea, um, 
de prototype, yay, blurred, uh, the prototype for uh, doing ultrasound imaging is a board that has the, the size of a Raspberry Pi. So you just plug it on a Raspberry Pi and you've got access to uh, ultrasound imaging. Uh, there are plenty to do because today uh, we speak about hardware, about software. Today we are at a period where we can uh, really mix the two. And uh, so we, we spoke about uh, IFUSE and uh, NeuroFUSE. So this is one type of application for ultrasound. It's not really imaging, it's more stimulation, but nonetheless, the principles are the same. Uh, what you can do is basically you send a, a wave of pressure inside tissues to stimulate one place. This is really the same thing as, as for imaging. Uh, and what is more and more exciting is that before you, you needed a helmet to do uh, either stimulation or imaging. Now you can really simplify the hardware you're putting in by integrating some intelligence uh, in the software and the intersection between software and hardware. Uh, you spoke also about photoacoustics uh, and deep steams. Uh, those are also modalities that are um, that are developed. There is a very interesting uh, modality that is a mix between RMI and ultrasound where uh, you can image the pattern of breathing of somebody inside uh, the RMI. But if you mix it with uh, machine learning algorithm, then you can also have a model of the person breathing and you could continue doing um, the RMI activity, you can unplug the ultrasound probe and the model of the ultrasound will keep on moving. So you you can basically learn enough to remove the modality and have a virtual patient. That's really exciting because it's not it's something that's quite recent, um, something relatively easy. And I believe that will uh, open doors for lots of uses. And last but not least, uh, in terms of ultrasound, and I believe this is where uh, there is such big opportunity, um, you may have heard about uh, single pixel imaging. So researchers have been able to uh, image, to take a picture using a single pixel sensor by sending a flash that would encode parts and bits of the, of the image. Basically, you can use the same principle uh, with ultrasound that's called compressed sensing uh, and where you previously needed to have a thousand sensors to get like a camera a high definition image you can replace it with a single uh, sensor and you would have some modality in preparing the, the way you stimulate your image but you can have high resolution 3d volumes images with only one sensor uh, because you would offload lots of computation to a GPU or CPU on the side. And what it means is that for the maker, the researcher, the hacker, then it means that before you you may have needed a huge probe, which was costly, now you could use, in theory, uh, a very small board, plug this specific sensor, which is also low cost because it's relatively simple, and that would open the, the door for experimenting at home on a budget. So very exciting times ahead. Guess that's it. Thank you so much. That, that that's awesome. That's awesome. So just just follow, following up on uh, a few of the things you talked about there. Um, so the I, I didn't quite hear the the technology said you were working with another another person who's also developing an open something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, there is one community which is called Open Source Imaging. Uh, I can send you, the, they've got a website which I believe is called Open Source Imaging. Um, okay. And they were at first working on uh, Open RMI. RMI. Oh, oh, um, like uh, ERM. Uh... ERM en français, voilà. Ah, d'accord, d'accord. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Gotcha. That's so cool. these guys are really uh, are doing a tremendous job. They're working on open source as SDR. So uh, this type of devices you do when you want to do some uh, software defined radio. 
Ah, ok, ok, ok. Mm. And they're hacking that to do uh, open source uh, ERM. So there's, there's a, I mean, I, I've, I haven't heard of that. So that's, that's very cool. Um, there's a, there's a group up in, um, there's a group up in Scotland. Um, I, f I forget the, the city, it, it, but it's like very, you know, north even of Edinburgh. Um, and uh, uh, they're working on a particular, I mean, they make everything uh, available but they're working on kind of like a new type of MRI as opposed to, uh, I forget what they call it, like fast cycling something. Um, anyway, I, I can also find the link. Um, so the, the community of, uh, of 150, uh, that's, a, that's a very large community <laughs> of developers. Uh, did, did, I mean, did that really come around from, from Hackaday? So, uh... I'd like to, to caveat it. Um, we, uh, we, we had a very, there, there was a very interesting presentation in Grenoble uh, earlier in the uh, beginning of March, I believe, just before the crisis on open source design and open source communities behind the open source designs. Uh, and there is um, in practice in a community of 150 people, uh, in practice, you've got 100 curious you've got 50 users and then inside that you you may have a couple of contributors you know actual contributors i believe that the same law applies when it comes to to wikipedia you compare the people going on wikipedia the people editing and the people creating content right right so right. and it's like it's like seven people creating content <laughs> yeah yeah uh, no that's i mean understood but that's still um I mean, I, I'm interested to know, uh, you know, how, like, what venues have you found that have, you know, put you in touch with, uh, with other people who, I mean, even if, if even if they're just curious, um, but they're, they're, have some technical sophistication, and they're asking, you know, they're asking good questions. I mean, as, yeah. So here, um, What's great is that it's really a niche. Uh, open source ultrasound <laughs> does not exist yet. Uh, so when people are, are Googling or when people are, are searching for this type of terms, then they automatically fall on Hackaday. Uh, I had the chance to publish an article in the Journal of Open Hardware. So that's also a source for, for F-Rolls. Uh, I've been working, uh, so I'm selling this design uh, for economic reasons, because when you want to prototype, it's always cheaper to go for batches. So, okay, you want to save money, so you buy 10 boards instead of one. What do you do with the nine others? Uh, so I'm starting selling those really as prototypes and people starting buying those. Uh, I've got, so this is also part of the referrals and that's also a source of connections because, uh, for example, researchers, do not have access to this type of, uh, of equipment. Uh, and so uh, it's an easy way to connect with researchers. So it's really a partnership because they help me with funding uh, the, the research because that's, that's my job. And at the same time, I can get the user case, I can get the feedbacks on the, on the product. And uh, that's really good in developing the, the different versions of the hardware you know that when people uh, are buying you know you're on the right path but then if they can provide some uh, feedback then you really know where you can go sure, sure. yeah we, we um at uh, thursday's hack night uh, san francisco time um we had uh, john chibuk from um who's in toronto and he developed these um you might have seen these on kickstarter which is like a, a near infrared uh, pair of glasses and so it's just got a near infrared sensor right by the ear. And, you know, in, he was talking about, you know, his Kickstarter projects target and, you know, trying to, I mean, it's basically, you know, trying to bootstrap something with just a small build, you know, so what, when you, when you can get to, you know, 25 or 50 units, that it's, it's enough to, it's enough to get something going that at least sustains itself. <clears throat> in terms of, you know, covering costs and, uh, uh, 
and like you said, like the, the people who are going to take them are going to usually be developers or people with some technical understanding and are probably going to contribute uh, in some fashion. Um, I, I know, I know Jean, um, you know, Jean, Jean was, was very excited that she had researchers buying her Spectra kits. Yeah, and without possibly uh, saying too much, but um, there is there are lots of do to to do in uh, ultrasound tomography. Uh, there have been a couple of articles very recently that shows that there is a field uh, that's really growing fast. And for example, when you speak of uh, the brain imaging, yeah, definitely, you may want to do tomography. This is the right modality for ultrasound. And uh, the progress we've seen in terms of software signal processing uh, are yielding extremely interesting results in terms of quality of image. So I'm really excited. I am also quite proud to have Chen uh, on the in the in the small community, and she has supported uh, you know part of the exchanges we, we were speaking about the, between the different members. Uh, she's also been contributing on the state-of-the-art review of single element ultrasound imaging, which is the basis for different modalities, including tomography. Yeah, yeah, super exciting. And um, so, but again, just just to uh, just understand, so when you were starting this, uh, were you already a software engineer? Not at all. Uh, no. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm not a software engineer. Okay. Okay. So, uh, to to tell the truth, uh, I'm not alone. What I did was I designed some stuff that were crappy, and I had people support me in the review of the designs. Okay. Uh, plus, you know, all the support you one always forgets, but uh, all the people when you exchange ideas, when you say, "Okay, I've got this design. How do I make it a reality?" So they would bounce you to the right fab. And then how do you market it? Then all of that uh, means that when you want to work on this type of project, you cannot wear a single hat and it's easier to coordinate and to, to seek for the experience of others on their different fields of expertise. So um, you talked about uh, um, people using this in the MRI? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is uh, not yet, so in the case of my hardware, it's not something that is done yet. Okay. Uh, it's done in research at the moment where, uh, so they're coupling the, the brazing patterns of, um, of patients within an RM and where they can remove the device and uh, they would still taking the inputs from the RI or, um, I, they would, um, yeah, they would <laughs> be able to recreate the ultrasound image and status. So, what are they? Which part of the body are they trying to image? Uh, from what I remember from, from this article, it was the the lungs, okay. the, which is quite easy to see in ultrasound because those are uh, opaque to, to ultrasound. Sure, sure, sure. I see. I see. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's, as you can imagine, I mean, especially with, with neuro uh, imaging people, there's a lot of, there's a lot of custom hardware that people built for, for, you know, doing things like, you know, TMS in the magnet, um, uh, that's transcranial magnetic stimulation, or even, even electrical stimulation. Um, and uh, it, it, it is super helpful when you have the the plans and the designs because you know you, essentially these are all these are all single build systems you know mm -hmm. for the most part um uh yeah so that that uh that's particularly interesting too um what we could do in terms of combining that if it was uh if it was if it could be done safely um <clears throat> And if I remember well, um, there was these articles also about stimulation of the vagus nerve. Yes. Uh, that used US as well. Uh, so this could be definitely a good practicing field because 
at least personally, I'd be more in favor of trying at first on the Vegas nerf compared to, to <laughs> the old bugs there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all are a little protective of our of our brains. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, the the so Vegas nerve stimulation um, uh, is uh, like I said. You know, I I first became familiar with with focused ultrasound um, from uh, Jamie Tyler's work at when he was at uh, Virginia Tech. He's uh, now moved to Arizona State, and um, and he's been involved with both you know brain brain stimulation and and vagus nerve he's got some some great vagus nerve stuff um and um yeah the um uh, hopefully uh, again you know I, it's not perfect for for those in europe to join us on thursday nights but um but we're hopefully having a, a researcher from ut dallas talk about vagus nerve stimulation uh this this week uh, this this week or next week, um, so you know there's a lot of a lot of really interesting, um, uh, a lot of really interesting kind of like multimodal um, possibilities there, especially when you know vagus nerve seems to be also involved with uh, respiratory activity, and uh, so for those where we're also collecting say F nears. And we can look at look at that modulation. Um, what what's also extremely interesting so for for ultrasound uh, is that so you can use it as a stimulation, but also as an imaging device. Uh, and for example, um, so that those are not really directly um, uh, no tech related, but for example. Uh, they use ultrasound on very simple devices to to track your breathing patterns, uh, to to track also uh, body composition. You can use it. People who have uh, well who are amputees, uh, you can connect a sensor uh, in surface to see uh, and to understand what your muscles are trying to do. And you can control a virtual hand only via ultrasound on your arm. Um, Ultrasound is used also, for example, after stroke recovery, uh, and you you try to to rework uh, how you, you your tongue works. You can put a single sensor there, and you can really improve the efficiency of the recovery sessions by enabling the patient having access to biofeedback of uh, of his activities. So there, are, it's really a tool. Ultrasound is a tool, and now is how do you take advantage of what it offers? And really, the, the the opportunities are infinite. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was also um, very impressed with your documentation. Uh, and it's, did you write all that yourself, or was that part of the community helping? Um, so I wrote most of it myself, but because I'm extremely lazy, why it was at the very beginning I defined kind of of a small convention uh, that would help me in structuring the, the doc. So basically, if I'm writing notes like in a lab notebook, uh, it would the, the script would parse what I would have written and would structure the notes for me. For example, if I'm working on this piece of hardware with this type of probe, then the script will parse all of that and will create the documentation accordingly. So it's, it seems that it's a full documentation, but actually there is an actual brain behind that, uh, the script who is organizing it for me. Okay, this sounds, this sounds like a very interesting sub-project. <laughs> actually, it's, uh, yeah, for open source hardware, uh, when you've got software, you've got code, so it, it's easy to share, but when you've got hardware, you really need to document what you're doing. So it's the core, you, you cannot have a, an open source hardware project without documentation. So uh, this is a must. Plus, uh, I was previously a, a researcher, and you tend to keep the habits of you know keeping a lab book and writing what you're doing, and so that you know you can refer to your experiments later on. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you have um, what do you what do you call your main homepage for this project? 
uh, that's a very good question. I'm bad <laughs> at marketing and communication. So uh, the main was at first Acaday, and then I had to find a name for the project. So I booked the Unoric uh, uh, web page, which the link, I believe, was shared earlier. OK. Uh, and the name is shit, so please uh, don't blame <laughs> me. I just had no. <laughs> you you wanted to find something unique. <laughs> yeah, that but that's the thing. You don't want people to to Google you and to go somewhere else. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and you you have a Slack channel. Uh, I want to I want to mention that for anybody who who wants to join. That's uh, that's your main you know development chat room it's let's say the main chat room development yes uh, it's more of a place where people who are curious just drop by uh, we've got different profiles like doctors uh, we've got electronic engineers we've got software uh, guys uh, researchers we've got students uh, so it's more of a melting pot where people who have questions about ultrasound can come and, and have a chat yeah, yeah, that's great. And and um, so uh, yeah, what? Uh, how much uh, do you have systems available for for developers now? Uh, and what's what's the cost? So, if, if my, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, advertisement. Uh, so uh, the. The first piece of hardware I've developed was a relatively bigger board. The cost is approximately five hundred dollars. So I'm not ashamed to say it's not the cost of it, but I factor in the the cost of prototyping. Uh, so so that at least it's a not not loss, no less activity for me. Uh, and so the, the smaller board I was uh, showing is a prototype. The price should be half of it, so it should go down to 250. Uh, the idea is uh, previously I had so startups who wanted to have proof of concept used the previous board, uh, researchers, um, students, and now I'm trying to get a lighter version, uh, streamlined, which is not as efficient and the quality is a bit lower. But at least it uh, lowers a bit the, the price uh, and the, the barrier of the cost. Mm. And uh, the well, the IED is really you. If you want to experiment with ultrasound, uh, you get a sensor, you get this board, you put uh, them together, you plug that on a Raspberry Pi, and then you all set to to do your first big experiments with uh, ultrasound. Mm. Uh, I should mention sorry. Should no, no. mention uh, that uh, this is also building on another open source community, which is uh, um, UCIS, which is the open source uh, for FPGAs. So okay. FP so FPGAs were a uh, for us uh, hardware guys were a pain because you want to develop some stuff on very efficient, very fast chips. Uh, you had to download tools that were uh, tens of gigabytes, uh, complicated license you had to pay, blah, blah, blah. And a couple of years ago, one guy retro-engineered the way these tools worked and developed an open source tool chain to work on some FPGAs. And uh, that was a fantastic effort. And that also uh, supported the development of lots of devices, of open source devices, that would have not existed without this work. So uh, mine is typically that. Uh, and this is something that can be applied really everywhere. And for example, even if you want to do some uh, machine learning, if you want to do fast recognition or whatever in terms of neural network, you can re-implement those in those chips and you'll get amazing performances. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had... Uh... You know, both notice that and and mention that to others that uh, I saw you were using that on your board, and so that's that's great to know uh, that uh, yeah, it's great to know some of the story behind that, and also that uh, that somebody's made that kind of development work easier. Uh, what what are the 
I mean, what are the particular components that uh, that change the price? I mean, in terms of uh, going from five hundred to two fifty, uh, what what are you? Yeah, what what are the the big big items on that board? So uh, first of all, the the work on the cost of uh, of the bill of material is always um, closely linked with the specifications of your board and what you, you're asking of it. So uh, it was first a uh, decision of streamline the design and to get to remove as much as possible from the board that was not strictly necessary. So the first board, for example, has more memories, has more input outputs, uh, is a bit more flexible if you want. This one is really, uh, you know, it's the, the the bare bones of ultrasound. That being said, uh, they say that you always uh, innovate best when you have constraints, and uh, having these constraints um, enabled me to design new modes of using this board that I would not have thought of if I were still with the the larger the larger board. So. Yeah, also exciting. For example, uh, you there is a protocol to transmit music I to S, which is the bottleneck. For example, why you have C CDs and why CDs were used, uh, how you can use MP3s to uh, optimize the, the quality of your music. So behind that, there is a protocol of uh, transmitting music data, and basically by hacking. The way the signal is processed in ultrasound, you just shift that to the audible spectrum, and you can tap into this uh, this protocol. So this small board, for example, at a lower cost, also opens new doors because you had to innovate to make this small board work. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Um, well, uh, let me let me ask other people if they've. They've also got questions. I, I know um, one of the, oh, sorry. So uh, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, what uh, is a target of, of uh, ultrasound stimulation, as you think? Uh, this is really up to you. So I think I think you've been using it, Luke, uh, to to look into materials. Yeah. So, sorry, can you come again? Uh, I, I, I've seen that uh, some of your demos. You've been like uh, checking checking walls and. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So the the targets so far um, were uh, custom made. They, they were non uh, non living tissues. Uh, it's more for the purpose of calibration. It's always easier to have a phantom which you know, and uh, from which you can assess the quality of your uh, of your image. Uh, I, I I mean uh, what uh, mm, in a el electric stimulation, uh, we modulating uh, electrical activity, uh, ultrasound stimulation, what activity <laughs> it uh, modulates? We have no ultrasound in brain, so what what is targets? It's it's mo some molecules or it's some uh, uh, prote proteins or some synapses or what? What, what f physical process to be, which uh, uh, then become electrical activity of brain? Um, this I'm really not an expert on that, but what from what I understand and from the literature review, it seems that uh, ultrasound is sending a pressure wave through your body, uh, and so you've got some mechanical activities. Uh, it's like you you give a small punch in a place, and uh, the compression wave uh, will compress a specific, and you will have an action. So that's why I understand, for example, on the vagus nerve. What's happening is if you uh, go and stimulate directly, mechanically, the nerve, then you can get an answer. But uh, Morgan, I'll let you possibly yes. answer that. 
no, no, and and uh, um, you know, I'll say that this is this is why it is um, so. Well, this is why I'm I'm so interested to have access to an ultrasound uh, stimulator. Uh, is that I because I have high density EEG, and because I you know and and other modalities, uh, we want to look at this. Like it's not well understood what's what's going on. As as is the the still uh, even you know nonlinear effects of of transcranial electrical stimulation, you know in the sense that uh, I mean we we have a we have a good story for why t you know TDCS uh, does what it does, um, but uh, but our our modeling doesn't actually predict. Uh, uh, in, in all cases, it doesn't actually predict what we get to, from experiment. So I, I, this is, you know, this is why I want to see more, more stimulators available for researchers to look at. Um, the, the great thing is that, uh, so the Focused Ultrasound um, Foundation is based in Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, what, what we're kind of riding on is is also a, a huge amount of work in um, in for oncology, right? So the the great thing is that uh, there's a number, you know, the applications like destroying brain tumors um, have have really helped us push, you know, the the safety and the um, and, and some of the other technologies in terms of, you know, focality and, and software. And uh, uh, so, you know, I think what's, what's really left is uh, better understanding the neurophysiology of the stimulation, but, uh, and doing, being able to do things in the scan, you know, in the MRI, uh, again, it would be, you know, uh, incredibly helpful for, for uh, you know, the kinds of experiments that would help us better understand what, uh, what is happening. Um, so that's, that's why I'm very excited about uh, seeing this technology developed. Yeah. And, and um, we can, we can point to more papers by, you know, Jamie Tyler and others. <laughs> Uh, maybe a, a question, more, more detailed question. I, I understand in modern science uh, and engineering, uh, understanding is modeling. We have yes. two complex uh, systems. So what uh, is modeling about uh, EG? I understand uh, there is a modeling, modeling software of electrical stimulus. Uh, have we any modeling of ultrasound stimulation with, with neurons, with all these billion min min neurons? What is the uh, models of uh, have we these models of ultrasound stimulation which become activity electrical activity? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, possibly one one thing uh, is for ultrasound. Uh, I don't know spe specifically for uh, neurons, but you've got uh, already a major toolbox when it comes to modeling uh, sound waves and pressure fields that comes from. Um, from transducers, but then uh, I don't know if there is a modeling for living tissues or, or cells. Yeah, so there's um, there's actually some some great uh, some great toolboxes. Um, uh, one one's actually called Neuron, and uh, that's you know you can see um, some some. T, TDCS, I believe, modeling using you know some some neuron models. Uh, it's a poorly named package, honestly, because uh, you know you don't want to be. <laughs> it's also like the most widely searched uh, thing. But if you if you check like neuron C plus uh, plus uh, toolkit, uh, I think you can find you can find it. But um, they they've certainly got lots of. Um, you know these these kinds of uh, computational neuroscience models. Um, I don't. I haven't seen. I don't know of any with focused ultrasound, to be honest. And uh, I think that would be. You know. I, I mean. I'm. I'm going to search later. Um, uh, yeah. That that would be really interesting to see. Um, 
and like I said, you know, one of the one of the really or certain certainly one of the big open research areas in TES is still, you know, why do our our electrical models of of the you know stimulation not match experiments? For for instance, things like you know doubling doubling the electrical stimulation in TDCS and um, and having you know nonlinear effects in the in say TMS stimulation in the same area, right? Um, so in in those cases we can we understand you know the the equations that we're using and we have good models you know good electrical models of of the neuronal populations but um, yeah the experiment experiment doesn't match as far as I know I, I I don't know if any focused ultrasound but I'd love to if anybody's got links um, please please share them. And about uh, ultrasound in general, so uh, it's really a well-known technology. Uh, the, the transducers were discovered more than a, cent a century ago. Uh, and it's been used mostly for imaging. Uh, the word uh, use was the use for uh, liptotricity for uh, destroying the, uh, the stones, the kidney stones. Uh, but we know that there are also other types of stimulation like uh, uh, recovery enhancing effect by uh, using ultrasound. For example, if you've got a broken bone, uh, you could accelerate the, the recovery by using ultrasound on a processed manner. And it's something that I believe is not already very well documented today. And that may be worth uh, trying and document. Yeah. Uh, Luc, uh, you mentioned um, open source FPGA toolchain. Do you remember the name? Yeah, uh, it's the, the one that's mentioned. That's right. It's uh, iStorm and it's uh, UCS based. It's the one uh, developed by Claire Clifford. Okay. That's the that's the person who is uh, on the website Clifford.at. and she's been doing uh, an amazing, really an amazing work, and uh, what she's done is is just changing the the field of this uh, research. Okay, but I had a question: uh, Was it actually FPGA design or design of FPGA devices themselves? Sorry, can you come again? Uh, I know there are like several directions. So one yeah. is the designing components for FPGA and another one is actually designing the FPGA devices to make the devices themselves open source. Which one was that? Um, so it's not, the chip itself is not open source and there is a part from the RISC-V processes, there is very limited number of open source chips. Uh, it's open source in the sense that they um, retro-engineered the way the bit streams or the way you program PGA. Okay. And so they act the appropriate, proprietary chip. So it's not fully open source. All right, because I, I know uh, there is work at the university in the United States where they actually want to make design of custom FPGA chips uh, open source themselves. But I, I have really much work in progress. It's not really available yet for mass production. Thank you. But it would be interesting if anyone would try actually to go to that depth. Yeah. OK, thanks. Yeah, there's there's um, there's definitely some you know there's some very good modeling of like I would I almost want to call it like material science of 
of ultrasound, or again, focused ultrasound, just getting with the, keeping with that question about what's, what's going on with the focused ultrasound um, stimulation. Um, but uh, again, I, I see a lot of it is still focused on the, the, you know, cancer and, and, you know, kind of tissue ablation uh, models. Um, it seems like I'm seeing a lot of micro bubble stuff. Uh, again, it's kind of used for for cancer cancer treatment. What you do uh, in ultrasound, so for micro bubbles, it uh, it can be used as a contrast contrasting agent. So you can uh, better see the the cells you want to destroy. And uh, the principle of the bubbles as well is that when you send a pressure field, so oscillating fields that go very high and very low. If you go into negative pressures, then you create cavitation. And cavitation uh, is also, in terms of non-linearity, is extremely interesting. Because what happens uh, when you do cavitation in water is actually you create a small star where uh, the temperature reaches thousands of degrees inside a small glass of water using ultrasound. So if that's happening, in a glass of water, what's going to happen once you do it in your body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and this is why they're doing lots of good modeling work of, of what, <laughs> what's happening, because <laughs> obviously they're they're trying they're trying to destroy things, uh, uh, at least in the cancer case. And uh, uh, um, about uh, article of. Uh... Stuart Hamerov, which, uh, which uh, he, he used uh, ultrasound stimulation, uh, eight eight megahertz, eight megahertz, uh, for uh, microtubules of neurons somehow. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, <laughs> what's uh, what's the nature of? Is it possible? Uh, how we can uh, can uh, conduct this experiment? <laughs> Uh, that would be interesting if you could share the article. Uh, basically, ultrasound is not at all complicated because uh, it's based on a, on a transducer. The transducer transforms exactly an electrical signal into a pressure signal. Uh, and the state of electronics today makes it that you can produce any type of, uh, of electrical signal. And that means you can uh, do any type of ultrasound signal. Uh, 8 megahertz that you were mentioning is a typical frequency for imaging. And we often go 10, 50 times more uh, quicker than that. So provided uh, you find, first the hardware is not going to be an issue, the electronics. And then the, the issue for ultrasound is more to be close with the transducers uh, fabs. These guys are doing the, the sensors. There are not plenty. And when you want to do custom hardware, then you really uh, need to get into this industry and to, to have custom made sensors. Uh, there are a couple in Europe. Uh, there are a couple in the US. But most of them are in China. And uh, it's not always easy to, to find the right transducers. But once you've got those, uh, you've got the, the specs of your transducer, you've got the right hardware. Then if you want to send a 8 megahertz uh, wave wherever you want uh, using a couple of sensors, then it's, I won't say it's a piece of cake, but it's relatively easy. And Luca, uh, so your board is, is single channel, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, OK. What, what so go ahead. Well, uh, the, the, you know, I was speaking about innovating under constraints. Uh, today, imaging is more and more channels. Why? Because it's like a camera. The more sensors you have, the better the quality of the image. But I'm really convinced that uh, using this compressed sensing approach, where you can encode uh, what you want to do within the signal itself, uh, you have a smart design where you demultiply a single source into thousands of virtual sources. You can create 3D imaging with only a single sensor. There, are, there have been a couple of papers 
uh, that have been published that show that it is feasible. Now the bottleneck is more on the software side. So I'm really convinced that no need to go into several channels when you can have one, be smart and use it. Yeah, that's that, that's super interesting. And um, yeah, do I mean I we can follow up later, but I would love I would love any references you have um, to this, you know, because certainly uh, you know my my background is is from MRI, and uh, I honestly never really got any any uh, training on you know ultrasound techniques, uh, reconstruction techniques. Um, uh, I, I wasn't coming from biomedical engineering, I guess is maybe maybe why. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm very interested to learn more, and uh, you know, as well as I, mean, I think Hans already asked this, but um, you know, open source reconstruction software and uh, thing, things like that. Even you know your point about compressed sensing, I, I love. Um, is there software already for doing multi-channel ultrasound? <laughs> yeah, for for that, so we we could spend hours speaking about that. Okay. But um, yeah, the software for multi-channel uh, already exists. There are okay. toolboxes that exist. Uh, some of them are closed, but because it's easier to open source software, uh, yeah. If you if you go on GitHub, you can find like I believe there is one software called Open Hyphus okay. uh, that could match what you you're mentioning. Okay. Okay. I sent link in chat. Cool. Thanks. Say say, say that uh, software again. Open Hyphus, like uh, open uh, high intensity yeah. focus ultrasound. Thank you. Well, I I want to be uh, cognizant of, of that it's evening. Uh, I don't think quite late evening there, uh, but uh, it's evening for you. Um, certainly really appreciate you coming speaking with us. And uh, I know that neuro is not your thing um, but, uh, but I hope that, um, I hope we can have you back and we'll have some, have somebody with some experience who's, uh, uh, also been doing, you know, either playing with one of your boards or is, uh, has one of the, um, uh, there's a couple companies that make neuro, neurofus, uh, you know, one is actually called neurofus, uh, which I think is, I think is Jamie Tyler's company, or I think he's. A part of it um but um yeah does a anybody have more questions for luke a and have you played uh do you have one of uh gene's spectra kits no must no. be honest the, the the time is always the, the constraint and you, you know the stuff you you see plenty of nice stuff you want to play with everything but you never have time to to play with it so i must say no and i'm ashamed of it no no i, I mean i'm uh, i'm particularly curious about you know using using your single channel boards with her you know 32 channel system and uh, seeing seeing what the two can do together so that's something that we, we, we had been discussing. Uh, okay. And yeah, I'm also extremely curious to see what could be done. And I'm pretty sure we can do easy setups. Uh, as a side note, I worked on uh, ultrasound tomography on some tests using my hardware. Uh, that shows promising results, but uh, yeah, definitely curious to see what what happens with a uh, chance board as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. A okay. uh, question: uh, uh, Will be uh, there some advantages uh, we, if we will use uh, multi-channel uh, uh, ultrasound stimulation? The the advantages is that um, you can imagine, for example, that uh, ultrasound is like a laser beam, 
So, uh, like in uh, radiotherapy, uh, when you want to stimulate one place, if you got only one sensor, the energy will be uh, in one direction. If you use two, you can have them uh, intersect at the zone you want to stimulate. And so you can lose less energy on the other places. So basically having more sensors enable you to better focus the energy where you want to have the stimulation. Uh, and I believe also for, uh, for example, for transcranial ultrasound, if you've got an array of sensors, what you can do uh, is that it's called time reversal. Uh, what you can do is you can analyze the pattern that modifies the waves that you send to the brain. If you know that the brain is going to, to change your, uh, your plane wave, you can preliminary change your wave, then it will go through the cranium and then uh, it will modify, but it will modify to what you are expecting and then it will uh, focus nicely. So it enables you once more to better focus on the area where uh, you want to focus and only this area. And for example, in the, it's a bit the extreme, but uh, in terms of focus ultrasound for oncology, where you want to destroy tumors, you don't, if you've got a brain tumor, you don't want to burn half of the brain to, to burn part of a tumor. Uh, another question. Uh, we, uh, when we're using uh, TMS or RTMS, repetitive TMS, uh, when, when we're uh, stimulating low frequency, then we inhib inhibiting, inhibiting activity. When we're using a uh, high frequency, we uh, stimulating. Uh, is uh, there a possibility of inhib inhibiting, in inhibition uh, with uh, ultrasound or only stimulation? That's a good question. I I think uh, I think Luke has already said, Dimitri, this is not that's not his not exactly his area. Um, but uh, I am I'm also very interested to know more about, you know, what what is possible uh, um, with ultrasound, you know, stimulation specifically. And I, I don't know, you know, the, the kind of the kind of um, differences that people talk about with anodal and cathodal and, and um, you know, it's, it's TDCS. Uh, I don't think, um, uh, you know, are still very well understood either. Um, so I think we should, we, we'll dive into some the, the literature searches and see what we can find. Um, but yeah. And what we'll definitely try and do is is uh, see if if we can get somebody who uh, even better somebody who's got some papers on on those to come and come and talk with us about those. Okay. Well, I I want to thank Luke for his time. Um, Links, links for uh, the project, and um, and how how do people uh, sign up for your Slack? Is um, there is a link on the project website, just pointing to the Slack. So yeah, if you have any question, if you want to just come and be curious, uh, just feel free to drop by. It's always open. And thank you so much for giving me the the chance to speak That's about the, this project. I know it's not directly related, but again, we're, I believe, at uh, an early stage of uh, rediscovering ultrasound and its possible uses. And that's definitely a very exciting place to be. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks again. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Rick. So um, sorry for all the um, technical issues this morning. Um, I do want to figure out what's going on. So I'm not the only one who's having this. Like when I connect, um, 
I could connect or I would get 